it would be hard to make a Windsor chair without a draw knife. This tool is very important. It's not a tool that a lot of woodworkers are familiar with. So I'm going to take a, a moment to talk about the knife and what to look for. I like my knife to have the handles lying either in the plane with the cutting edge or just slightly dropped. That way, my, I am pulling the blade to me uh, uh, rather without my wrist broken and uh, uh, I have a lot more control. The other thing about a knife is it should have a long sloping bevel. A knife that is ground like a chisel will not work well. So these are the things to look for. Draw knife is used in two ways, whether you're making a chair or doing mostly anything else. It's either used for shaping, getting rid of stock real fast, or for whittling, which would be drawing along the grain. Spindles, bows, things like that are whittled. Draw knife is always used on a Windsor seat to do the rough shaping. <clears throat> the handles on the knife seem to imply that you hold it like this and pull it toward you. You hold the draw knife in whatever position is most efficient and most comfortable. And when you draw it to you, you don't pull it straight on, you try to slice with the, with the knife. And there's a reason for that. First of all, wood, like anything else, will cut better if the uh, tool is a, is, is a skew. Think about the butcher cutting a piece of meat. He does not take the knife and push it through the meat. He slices through the meat. And so it is with a draw knife. This is a slicing tool. It is not a tool that is used like a two-handed hatchet for chopping. It is a tool that is used by drawing it like this. And as I say, you hold the knife in whatever position is most efficient and most comfortable. So you're going to see me change positions with this knife as I work. Shaping the back edge of a seat, you'll notice that while I'm gripping this handle here, I've, 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 I've actually moved out to the end of this handle. And notice the slicing cut. Now that has another benefit to you. Not only is the wood going to cut more cleanly, you're distributing the cutting action, the wear of the cutting action, the friction caused by cutting, over the entire cutting edge. If you pick up a draw knife and you see that it has a concave area worn in the cutting edge, it means it was owned and used by a guy who didn't know how to use it. So, now, as I move up onto the end grain, it's necessary to have even more of a slicing cut. Now what I'm doing is I've choked up and I'm basically pulling the knife like this. And you'll see even that on end grain, the knife is cutting a complete chip. In fact, if you were to look through this chip, from my point of view, you can see all the structure of the end grain in there. Now, another purpose of the draw knife is for whittling. When whittling, it's the same you would do with your pocket knife, only instead of pushing the knife away from you, you're pulling it toward you. Once again, the grip is determined by what is comfortable or efficient. <clears throat> to bring the spindle down to dimension, I can work on that surface with this grip. I can work on this surface with this grip. And on the top, I'll frequently use my finger like that.
Now I'm using a draw knife. Frequently guys will use it upside down. They'll flip it over so that the bezel, the sloping surface, is down and use it this way. And their argument is that they have more control. Well, they, can t they take a finer cut because they're using the knife upside down. What they've sacrificed is the speed with which this tool can be used. With the, the bezel up, you can still do very fine work. You can take shavings not much bigger than a hair. Or you can take off shavings the thickness of cardboard. But that set of sort of flexibility is only available to you if you use the tool the right way. Now, sharpening a knife is a different situation from most edge tools. I think it'll help if I draw you a cutting edge on a draw knife and show you how to sharpen it. A draw knife is called a knife because that's what it is. It's a knife edge tool. Now, in woodworking, there are two types of edge tools. The first is the chisel edge, like a plane blade. That's a chisel edge. If you take your knife out of your pocket, your pocket knife, and you were to cut the blade in two, you would see that it's shaped like this. That's a knife edge tool. Tools that go into wood and come back out again usually have a knife edge. Draw knife an example. A scorp is another example. A gutter adds is another example. This is the knife edge. Now a draw knife is a modified knife edge in that it has a sloping surface but then a flat bottom like that. In use, the knife will actually develop a slight little bit of rounding right there, which makes it like your pocket knife. Warning, warning, warning. Do not try to shape that relief on the lower edge. Let it occur through wear. If you try to shape it, you'll make it too large and you'll ruin the tool. Let it occur naturally and then just keep it under control through the sharpening process. Now, as the tool wears, it will begin to round over here and more down underneath, becoming more blunt. To sharpen the tool, you have to remove metal in here. But the problem is that eventually the, 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 cut, the, the, the tool will begin to distort. So while you're removing metal down here, you have to work up in this surface as well, maintaining that curve. And down below, you're always flattening. Now, you don't need gizmos to sharpen a draw knife. It is about as simple as can be. I use nothing more intricate than sandpaper on a block of wood. And let me show you. As I say, no gizmos are needed to sharpen a draw knife. This is about as dirt dumb, simple, and easy as could be. I have a hardwood block with a piece of 220 grit adhesive back sandpaper applied to it. I hold the knife like this, and I start to work back from the edge. First thing I want to do is I want to keep the curve of that cutting edge established. So I'm removing metal back from the edge, and then I slowly start to work my, my way upward and raise the block as I approach the cutting edge. And I can see when I get there because I'm creating a matte finish. So I can see it there indicating that I have gotten up to the cutting edge. And I'll work my way back here. So I'm lowering the block and I'm working up more now in here, keeping this shape established so it doesn't change with repeating sharpenings.
And there we go. That's about done it with the 220. I'll now flip it over and I'm going to apply it flat to the back. And there we go. I've done the work necessary on the back. I can see the polish along here that has come up with the, draw with the uh, sandpaper. Now, this is an important point. Never try to grind a draw knife. It, it, you'll, it'll get out of control on you and you'll ruin it. The sandpaper is the safest thing in the world and the easiest thing in the world. I've gone over it with the 220 grit. Now I'm going to do my finish shar sharpening with 330 grit. That's about as fine a grit as I need. A draw knife is a knife tool. It's not a chisel, it's not a plane, and it doesn't have to be as sharp as one of those two tools. So 330 grit, perfectly fine. And notice I'm not trying to roll that edge on the bottom. Remember Lost in Space? Danger, 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 Will Robinson. Do not try to roll to roll that edge. You'll ruin it. You'll ruin your knife. Just keep it under control. Now I come back over to the front or the top with the 330 grit and I do the same thing. I go out to the edge and I work it and then begin to lower the block of wood moving up along the sloping surface. That way I maintain the knife's profile. Maintained this way, this draw knife should be good for several generations of use. And there we go, all sharp and ready to put to use making Windsor chairs. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.